Look at CrowdStrike, it's up a little over 1%. Bed Bath & Beyond falls better than 8% in the pre-market, earnings missing pretty massively. FSLY, a stock that I love, down about 2% today. Brooks See Brothers just went bankrupt. Bed Bath & Beyond's probably going too soon. I mean, they just closed like 200 stores. What's happening? People are flooding into safety stocks. Time. This comes at the same day as Walgreens is down 9%, Bed Bath & Beyond is down 22%, both on bad retail news, including major store closings for Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs>
Macy's doing well at 4.5% on Macy's. Bed Bath & Beyond up 2.8%. Church. time highs other big names today also include blackberry bed bath and beyond which is also getting help from uh, its plan to launch three private label brands this quarter so the company continues its turnaround plan and as you can see a sea of green some big green uh here with these meme stocks tyler i'll uh, throw it back i to wish you. i were a meme i just <laughs> wish i were a meme christina you're uh, sitting around 69 percent bed bath and beyond 48 percent Express sitting at about 29%, BlackBerry 29 as well, Skills 24. It's BlackBerry, BB, and BBBY, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. All those stocks uh, uh, getting a little uh, hate after those monster runs. Um, take a look also at FireEye because apparently they're going to exit their security business and sell the name. Another retailer we continue to keep an eye on, Bed Bath & Beyond, with B of A moving to a no rating on that name, believing the meme stock is no longer trading on fundamentals. B of A also dropping coverage on GameStop for similar reasons. Carl. Morgan, speaking of which, our Sima Modi has a lot more on AMC and that crazy week. Hey, Sima. Hey, Carl. You look at Microvision, Express, Cosp, Bed Bath & Beyond, uh, GameStop still to this day. Uh, I think Root is one that people are starting to talk about. It's everywhere. Everywhere you've got insane shorting. And we can only assume along with that naked shorting with hard-to-borrow securities that is taking place. So As uh, final purchases are being made for the week, Bed Bath & Beyond rotated down. Proterra just rotated down a little bit more. We've got uh, Square rotated down a little bit. Snowflake rotated down a little bit. I think that all lies ahead for the U.S. And that's where Bed Bath & Beyond and businesses like Bye Bye Baby can really shine. All right. So that's the sales side of the equation. Of course, there's the cost side as well, Mark. Just yesterday uh, on this program, we were talking with uh, the CEO of a big uh, freight uh, data company. An office environment to create the new bed bath and beyond so that's work in progress but making uh great progress as we go along private label quickly just to wrap up here has that exceeded your expectations in this turnaround what does that mean for future efforts to double down yeah it's early but it has exceeded our particular company news here we did see bed bath and beyond really kind of collapse here uh, from where we were watching it this morning but i want to hear it <laughs> move in after hours yes bed bath and beyond is a momentum stock that is correct we have uh cisco victoria's secret and bed bath are all up uh, but we are specifically waiting for nvidia right now and Two priced in are disappointments like we saw say with Bed Bath and Beyond yesterday. Are they priced in? Um, that I think is now kind of coming to the fore. I don't know the answers to those questions, but what I do know is that what I'm seeing every day now appears to be a sell side capitulation. I the the, the number of notes that Beyond's down a little bit. Wind Resorts back to eighty three. And it is bed, bath, and beyond. B B B Y. Almost sounds like something James T. Kirk would say if he was going into orbit. Instead of space, the final frontier. Space, bed, bath, and beyond. B B B Y. I know it wasn't that funny. Uh, fourteen sixty-five is where it's trading right now. Fourteen dollars sixty-five cents. They bought fifty-seven hundred. That's five hundred and seventy thousand share equivalent. Over half a million shares. Uh, that they would have to buy at the October 15 calls strike. Higher after hours yesterday as a result of uh, the stock buyback announcement and a deal with Kroger. So what's fundamentals? What's meme stock here? Give us some context. Yeah, the argument is that there was fundamental updates. We saw really, as you said, a flurry of announcements from the company. Uh, not much changes. People aren't really going to Bed Bath & Beyond. People are opting for other avenues to 
uh, make similar purchases and that you're not really going to buy a Roomba from Kroger. Uh, <laughs> when you look at the stock move today, stock at one point market cap was back over $2 billion. But again, back in September, we saw quarterly updates that really poured some cold water on the fire of meme mania that has powered Bed Bath & Beyond in particular. And we've been seeing that with today's steady peel back from, from an initial spike at the market open. Billy, I'll say I love Bed Bath & Beyond. I have spent hours there, though I will say I haven't been there since before the pandemic. So interesting to hear you say that. But I do funds and individual investors to pile on to individual stocks. And we're seeing that with Bed Bath & Beyond and some of the mentions across Reddit and platforms like StockTwist. Yeah, talk a little bit about that, Bailey, because you spend more time on these platforms than I think is healthy for the average person, <laughs> especially in platforms like Wall Street Bets on, on Reddit. What are you seeing them talk about on StockTwist? He is a pure delight. Bed Bath & Beyond CEO Mark Tritton. Mark, thank you for coming back on. Last quarter, you were unhappy with it. Seems like you've course corrected. Tell us about it. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Good to see you. Um, so big, bold moves that we announced yesterday in terms of, you know, really two prongs, one around creating authority. And today, at least at the opening, we got an amazing run in Bed Bath & Beyond, okay? Now, a huge part of these gains similar to what we saw with GameStop and AMC. If you can take a look at the Bed Bath, you can see what I'm telling you about. We saw these at AMC, and we saw that in GameStop in January. If you notice, this is the kind of power box. So they're always looking for targets and shorting the uneven Bed Bath & Beyond. Again, say a Macy's or a Costco, which had fantastic numbers tonight. They had tremendous, you know, these guys at Bed Bath, they did have horrendous management before Mark Tritton came in. And by the way, last quarter was a disappointment for Tritton because they had the wrong kind of promotions. And maybe crowded anytime there were too many of them. And that's why Bed Bath & Beyond finished today up more than 15%, but at one point it was up more than 50%. Memo to the shorts. If you think you are shooting fish in a barrel when you go after these companies, well, you may not be the guy with the gun. Buy Bed Bath & Beyond on this pullback. It should be bought. The Kroger opportunity is too big to ignore. And I bet the shorts aren't finished covering. Okay, how about Avis? Now, this was even dumb. BBBY, up 55%. Uh, look at one week charts of Avis uh, and Bed Bath and Beyond, both uh, spiked. Avis jumping about 70%. Bed Bath and Beyond surged more than 70% in after hours trading on Tuesday. Still up more than 37%. And even a chart of Tesla from last week when it joined the Trillion Dollar Club still shows a 33% jump. For more on this now, volatility was up over 50% yesterday. Similar moves in Avis and Bed Bath & Beyond. We typically see volatility come in when a stock moves higher, uh, but not in these cases. Uh, the questions that we've been asked the most this week, how much of this is driven by the call volume? Um, you know, we're thinking that the call volume really overstates the impact, and you really want to look at the facing the big moves in the stock. So let's just look at um, Avis and Bed Bath & Beyond this week. Uh, positive catalyst, positive news leads to um, a lot of short covering, uh, less liquidity, and a big move in the stock, uh, you know, which is followed by a big amount of call volume. Sticking with uh, Avis on Tuesday, uh, big spike in the stock. Champion several money-losing companies like AMC, Bed Bath & Beyond, and BlackBerry, while targeting hedge fund takedowns and short sellers in the process. But the volatile trading frenzies have led to congressional hearings around regulation and potential gamification of the markets, as well as the evolving role of technology and social media. We can get some ice cream cake. That's kind of exciting, right? Bed Bath & Beyond, The Coffee Bean, Famous Footwear, Hot Topic, Nordstrom's, Petco, and, and even Office Depot. So, retailers from grocery and drug stores to large retailers like Bed Bath & Beyond and Best Buy in 5,000 U.S. cities. It gets kind of hectic, especially when you're looking for like a hot item that everybody's looking for. We see that. Well, Mel, um, and I love the optimism you started that with, with uh, we're bouncing at least a little or maybe stabilizing. Um, Bed Bath & Beyond, BBBY, Mel, uh, this is one that investors had hoped uh, would be also stabilizing, but instead we see a big put buyer coming in. They buy 5,000 or more of the January 15 puts. 
Um, that was with the stock at about 1520. It has since lost the 15 handle mel and traded down into the 14s. So um, in the long term, I like this. That's why I bought puts in this one and to the uh, Bed Bath and Beyond. I bought them there, but I'm ready to pull the trigger and buy that stock on a significant dip. GameStop up 2.2% pre-market, AMC, Bed Bath & Beyond, all those types of equities also higher pre-market. Bitcoin, though, that has not seen dip buying, at least so far. We're looking at Bitcoin below $43,000. So Marathon Digital, another Bitcoin stock falling as well pre-market, down nearly 3%. And John Najarian here. All right, take a look at Bed Bath & Beyond. We talked about it twice, uh, December and then again in January for unusual put activity. Well, they disappointed and shares are down better than 10% in the pre. It's falling through $13 a share. Bang! It was seven. Now that that's over, you see very disappointing numbers out of Bed Bath & Beyond. If the strategy wasn't working before the pandemic, it won't work now. On the flip side, the people who are working, they're gonna work even better. Who are those? We've talked about them. Walmart, Target, Costco, Amazon, TJX, what a great company that is. And I'd look Today, after Chewy co-founder Ryan Cohen revealed a big stake in the company, Leslie Picker has more on what changes Cohen wants to see. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Mike. Yeah, Cohen wants the company to streamline its turnaround plan, further align management compensation with shareholders, and consider himself, of course, because he's chairman of GameStop. Bed Bath & Beyond responded in a statement this morning saying that it hasn't had prior contact with RC Ventures, but it plans to, quote, carefully review their letter and hope to engage constructively around the ideas they have put forth. Shares of Bed Bath & Beyond surged at the open, although they pared back those gains a bit, still up about 30 percent right now, guys. Yeah, uh, and a crazy volatile stock uh, lately anyway. It was up in this uh, area of 20 just a couple of months ago, Leslie. What's fascinating about the response, though, here is, of course, Ryan Carter, as far as I can count, activist effort against Bed Bath & Beyond in, like, the fa past seven years or so. Yeah, no, you bring up a really good point. His roots are in e-commerce, but what he did with GameStop and what he's learned from GameStop, according to people who know him well, is this idea that he now better understands what brick and mortar entails, how it, uh, how to transform focused and he's hoping to do the same thing with Bed Bath & Beyond take those skills that he knows both from a, a digitally native company a brick and mortar native brick and mortar native company and apply those then to Bed Bath & Beyond in terms of a turnaround however unlike with GameStop when he first wrote a letter to that company it was all about that transfer before you go John and Jerry are here take a look at Bed Bath & Beyond folks BBBY how come well because the guy that runs GameStop his group has taken a stake and it's causing shares to go up by almost 90% in the pre. You know what else is moving, of course? Crude oil. Uh, told you like up over 100% in its Bed Bath & Beyond. Now, I know Bed Bath & Beyond has been a meme stock in the, in the past, but I, I got to wondering what's going on with Bed Bath & Beyond. Must be some sort of a short squeeze or something like that. And, and I thought, well... Uh, I'll, let me go to my computer and see see what is happening. So what I do is the first thing I do is go to Seeking Alpha. Uh, I have a subscription to it. I put in uh, the BBBY ticker and I come to this sheet here. As you can see, it's uh, 1022 Central Standard Time. Uh, it's now up 39, 40 percent. And I look at it to say, and the first thing that catches my eye is Bed Bath & Beyond surges after Chewy co-founder takes stake in, in the um, uh, and urges review. Then what I say is, uh, what's going on here? And I see that Seeking Alpha shows that it has a short interest, and it explains to me what short interest is. And it's, um, it's 25 Bed Bath & Beyond. In fact, he owns just shy of 10% of all outstanding stock. And he's basically calling to management to say, look, um, you need to reorganize this country, company. 
And if you go into it deeper, you're finding what you'll find that what he's suggesting is they go on the market and sell it. And Stocks that are moving higher in early hours, though, I wanted to point to Bed Bath & Beyond. Bloomberg reporting overnight that the company is reaching close to reaching a deal with activist investor Ryan Cohn to add three directors to its board. Of course, Cohn had been pushing for a potential sale, sale of its bye-bye baby business or maybe a sale of the company uh, at all. But it looks like BBBY. That's Bed Bath and Beyond. Uh, that one moving up because they've apparently come to an agreement with an activist, Ryan Cohen. Um, HNST. On it. Maybe wait till the end of the day. Also on Wednesday, Bed Bath and Beyond reports. The question here is simple. Will big news shareholder Ryan Cohen of Chewy and GameStop fame join the board? And will the bye-bye baby business be sold to private equity? I think it's all on the table and the stock goes up substantially. What else? We get to find out the secrets of BlackRock here. And you know what they are? GameStop and Bed Bath & Beyond, both beloved by Ryan Cohen. He chairs the first, and he's an insurgent in the second. Take them out, and now we got 29 left. So how do you winnow down this list of cheap retailers? Well, we ran a few more screens. First, because we don't want anything with a bad balance sheet. We End of the week, you have BlackRock, Delta, JP Morgan, Mini Meme Stock, Bed Bath & Beyond. On Thursday, you have Wells Fargo, the Sachs of Goldman, Citibank, Rite Aid, Morgan Stanley, Ally, and that's about all of the main ones. I'm looking forward to seeing what banks are projecting for upcoming quarters in this inflationary and higher interest rate environment. It's fourth quarter results. Courtney Reagan has the, the results, Courtney. Hi, Joe. Yeah, so this is a pretty disappointing quarter, to say the least. Bed Bath & Beyond posting a loss of 92 cents a share. Consensus was for three cents. Shares are down 35% in a year. Last month, though, Bed Bath & Beyond shares did rally when GameStop chairman and retail investor favorite Ryan Cohen took a 9.8% stake in the company. He got three board seats added in just a several weeks, too. But Bank of America says the stock was artificially propped up by Cohen's comments of 24% a month. Namely, Cohen said bed, bye bye baby is hanging in there. Well, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond is an interesting take because this one actually has a lot of high short interest. And so what will happen with that stock in particular is if there's news that's not great, but not terrible, you see a little bit of short covering. And so this is actually one that I will keep on my earnings coming forward. I'm optimistic about this. So then I looked at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. And now this is a company where their executive staff is telling us we underinvested in supply chains. And no surprise, now they're suffering. They're also Bed Bath & Beyond, BBBY, back into the toilet. Uh, that stock down double digits. Um, genius, uh, GNS. Can pass along prices. They have pricing power. But I look at Bed Bath and Beyond yesterday, for example, who said that they see consumer demand slowing. Are you seeing signs that that story has started to run out, or is that just kind of a one-off example? Well, I think that for this year, at least, um, even if the Fed is increasing interest rates, it will just normalize them to a neutral stance. So owned by by baby remember it's part of the company and there is a report in the wall street journal citing sources that there are several parties that have expressed interest in acquiring by by baby and the article names Cerberus capital management and a spac that is run by for, former casper ceo philip Krim. now when i spoke to mark tritton who's the ceo of bed bath and beyond just 10 days ago he did indeed confirm Yes, we are exploring strategic alternatives for Bye Bye Baby. There is no guarantee that a deal will be done. And this is being done at the request of Ryan Cohen. Remember, he is the chairman of GameStop, and he now owns about 10% of... Week 23%. Bed Bath & Beyond, year over year, down 40%. Best Buy, down 36% year over year. Home Depot, 26.6% year over year. Nordstrom... 18.4% year-over-year decline. Target, 17.4% year-over-year decline. Now, I don't know if, it, like, obviously people aren't spending more money online. And it or Nordstrom or gotcha. Bed Bath & Beyond, you know, places like that. And luxury, God forbid, you know, when the market is bad, 
trust me, luxury crashes. And that's what we've been seeing in the stock market lately. Jerry? 56% and change on the week down 4.9%. Bed Bath & Beyond year over year down 36%. Ulta Beauty down 31%. Lowe's It does make me think that anything related, like a Bed Bath & Beyond, anything like that, you would think would also see pressure. I'm really quite shocked that Target did not trade down more. You know, I sold, when, I, when it, they announced three weeks ago, I waited the three days, I bought some more stock, I sold that stock today. Ratio Camping World is at 43.9% short, and Bed Bath and Beyond sits at roughly 30% short. Investors realize that the spending days are over, but the last place people are still spending money is in the place that we just don't have the capacity to actually support it: air travel. We don't have enough. We consider one of the great mysteries of all of, of, of this entire market. It's Bed Bath and Beyond. I always railed against this retailer for endlessly buying back their stock at high prices with nothing to show for it. The good news is the company always had plenty of cash on hand to support it while it tried endlessly to transform the business. Now let us see your own Mark Tritton here. He's Say like Will Ferrell in old school, I hope to get to Bed Bath & Beyond tomorrow, but that's not the case here. I think you have to stay away. If you look at this chart, it is absolutely a broken chart. When you talk about a high beta name, Kelly, this is a name that's not even $600 million from a market cap perspective. So wildly volatile, high beta, but it's a broken chart. It's down. It's hard to know where to start. I'm taking a look at shares of Bed Bath & Beyond now. Of course, on the day, you're off about 20%. Exactly one year ago, June 30, shares peaked at around 33. You're still off now from that high, 85%. It's really hard to understand. Mark Tritton, of course, CEO, stepping down, coming in another sort of lackluster. I'm much more with Anthony Chacumba, Managing Director at Loop Capital, Bed Bath & Beyond, accelerating on the terminal. And Anthony, it feels as though you're pretty passionate that this company is going one direction and it's down. Absolutely. And it's funny, you know, in the intro, you talked about the pandemic and them being some sort of pandemic victim. I absolutely positively disagree. It may be the new brass standard. It was uh, down, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond had uh, same short sales down 27%. Now, I will say this. There are very few companies in retail that have ever recovered from down 27% that have made it. And that's something you have to watch. I know they have a new CEO. Name, sell for now. Sell for now. All right, what about Bed Bath & Beyond, Marianne? Oh, Bed Bath & Beyond. That's, uh, you know, been uh, history uh, the last couple of years of Consumers focusing on those home furnishings, including some high-ticket appliances. Everybody's got the countertop fryer, uh, whatever those things are. Uh, ben the Bath air fryer. Reported <laughs> a 20 yeah, I didn't need that. Uh, but Bed Bath reported a 23% drop in same-store sales. It's their strategy. You know, we saw that with Gap. We saw that with Bed Bath & Beyond. We take a look at their results. Those companies are going to be in a world of hurt as we go forward from here. But I'm a little confused because Amazon's way down, right? And investors seem to have largely backed away from that uh, pull-through uh, narrative during... ...to date, to be sure. Bed Bath & Beyond shares, those are up 16% month to date. And that's a company that has struggled mightily with its turnaround amid supply chain pressures under its CEO that's out, by the way. Now, willknowledge.com, enjoy the team. Now, BB, uh, BBBY, Bed Bath & Beyond, $8.50. Now, the buying level isn't too clear. But right now, I'm going to put it at $7 even. Okay, I'm going to put it at $7 even. I might update you guys on this one, uh, depending on how it moves. Because if we go down to the five-minute chart, there was really no resistance level now. We're also be going over BBBY, Bed Bath & Beyond. You guys know this one shot up crazy also. And this is also the number one mentioned on Reddit. I'll show you guys that list of the other ones. We also got Tilray shooting up, right? We got the list, okay? In the past 24 hours, Bed Bath & Beyond is the number one. So that's why you could probably expect that it had that huge push. Look at this, 58,000 upvotes and 2,400 mentions. The biggest one out of all of them. Stocks making the biggest move midday. We've got Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, First Solar, Palantir, and more. 
it almost feels like we're in meme stock mania again. Um, nothing against the people that trade these stocks or buy them on speculation or whatever. I do not buy these stocks. I'm not interested in buying these stocks. And so the fact that Bed Bath & Beyond was up 40% earlier, it was up 41%, AMC was up 13%. That actually bothers me a little bit as an investor because I don't wanna get back into this thing where um, there's bubbles forming in certain areas of the market and certain stocks. Meme stocks are taking over, the forums are taking over. Um, I get it, you know, that final name here, which is one of those meme stocks, Bed, Bath, and Beyond. I always like the Beyond department there at that store. <laughs> yeah, it seems like up, up, and away at this point in time. Mm. But from a chart perspective, today's uh, gap higher. Uh, it's running into major overhead resistance at the 200-day moving average at about 14.27 uh, on the chart. I healthy what you see. Those are not healthy moves in Bed, Bath, Beyond, AMC, GameStop. They're just not. And we know where they're going to end, or at least I think I know where they're going to end in. And so you want to own companies with strong fundamentals. You want to own companies with good, solid cash in their balance sheet, not lots of debt, because that's a whole other area that we can talk about. Beyond and others, number one, that's number one. And number two, I wonder why the meme, and I, I hate to call them investors because I don't really think that's what they're doing, but what right. the, how, the, the meme players keep playing the same stocks. Why don't they move on to something else? It really 500 has added a little more than 10%. We talked about Bed Bath & Beyond. What a move. By the way, no news on BBBY. And it rose 40%. For more on the return of the retail investors, bring in Gunjan Banerjee, markets reporter at the Wall Street Journal's Money and Investing Team, and a CNBC contributor, and Liz Young, head of investment strategy at So. Careful not to invest things, especially in a stock like Bed Bath & Beyond that's up this much over just a couple-day period. Don't put money in it that you're not prepared to lose in case things turn the other direction very quickly. Liz, how, how much of this movement in these three stocks in particular is driven by high short interest and low free float? In other words, a see more of these bigger dislocations. But when you look at a stock like Bed Bath & Beyond, 45 percent short interest, it became a pretty big target for some of these traders, traders. So that definitely is having a bigger impact. Yeah, Gudjan, you, you know, you wrote recently, I think it was maybe five weeks ago or something, how many of these tech stocks have become value. $34. But when you talk about all these stocks, AMC, Bed Bath & Beyond, Bed Bath & Beyond is really interesting. Elon Musk may wake up tomorrow and get one of those 20% discount flyers and decide to buy it. It's less than $500 million <laughs> in market cap. So this is a high beta. If you're a trader and you use stops, hop in. The water's warm. But if you're talking long-term investing, like... And if you want to take a bet here, Kelly, you take a bet on Bed Bath Beyond being bought for a lot of reasons, but not for the fact that they're making money. Well, at the same time, Bob, we wonder where all the money's coming from this time around or if this one is sustainable. And overall, people, ha like Jeff was saying, it has to be some kind of good sign if there's interest stocks that have seen quite a resurgence in recent weeks. Bed Bath & Beyond was up nine days, 156 percent until yesterday when it actually fell about 14 percent, snapping that winning streak. Just a little bit of buying coming back in this morning, though, Danny, up about two tenths of a percent before the bell. From today's trading, starting with the incredibly volatile Bed Bath & Beyond. A few years ago, they brought in this terrific manager from Target, Mark Tritton, chief merchandising officer, to turn things around. Bed Bath got a total makeover with some exciting private label brands, too, but the customers didn't like it. And the same store sales fell to an unfathomable minus 20. No, it's just that Bed Bath & Beyond has a small float and a ton of short sellers. The short interest made up 42 percent of the shares at one point. That's way too much, people. Whenever I had a short at my old hedge fund that got this crowded, as we call it, I would ski daddle. So Bed Bath rallied. On a short squeeze. We've seen since the March bear market rally. And Bed Bath and Beyond really took us to the Beyond section yesterday. With a 40% pop in a day and nine consecutive days of gains. For Plato once said, one meme tide lifts all meme boats. And overall that is exactly relevant and we're making some new records. The jump in stocks like Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, and meme poster stock GameStop helped push the GS most short index five-day change to up 18 percent. Just 1.2 percent and 2.4 percent respectively. And I'm pointing to Bed Bath & Beyond not because they reported earnings but every day when I come in I look at Bed Bath & Beyond and AMC to see whether the You're Reddit trade is still, uh, is still going strong, whether you still have the Robin Hood traders, the individual traders, and it is still on a tear, so up 4 percent because why not?
I don't no, know. but I think to her point on Bed Bath and Beyond, and yes, we all laugh Jeez. about checking the meme stocks when we come into the morning. It speaks of this speculative fervor that in some areas of the market is back. Isn't that mm. the exact opposite of the conversation we were having just about a month ago when the Fed's tightening policy? You don't viewers and listeners pay any attention to the Bed Bath and Beyonds of the world, or should they focus on Apple? I mean, which matters? Well, I think it depends on what your perspective is as an investor. If you're going in there and you're really trying to do this daily trading and you're and you're trying to be, uh... Uh, it's really starting to pick back up, specifically around Bed Bath and Beyond in particular, last couple of days. So, stocks that are outside those OG names like GameStop, AMC, and and you know Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah, to be honest, one of the things that I think has been really fascinating for me personally over the last year is that. You know, there's really been, I think, a really strong community built around some of these names where what you'll find is that people aren't just, you know, actively involved back then. AMC was huge back then. But even a company like Bed Bath & Beyond was one of the ones that received a lot of discussion, uh, you know, this time a year ago. So I think what's been really interesting is that it's not so much where every week there's a new meme stock or a new company people are talking about, but really there's like really strong communities coalescing analyst that comes out in downgrades. Let's just keep on talking about Bed Bath & Beyond. I think 53% of all analysts who are clearly overpaid all talk about this downgrade. Then you continue to see a downgrade come out like we did on Tuesday with Baird, and boom, you see Bed Bath & Beyond move higher. So there's only a 5% buy rate on the stock, but the volatility, sensational. When you talk about being attracted as a trader, you can use stops and you can understand that this is gonna continue to be a whipsaw. This is where you wanna be in the month of August. Among the AMC, Bed Bath and & Beyond and GameStop kind of crew, that, tri that tribunal, so to speak, right? You're only really positive on the Bed Bath & Beyond story, not so much GameStop and AMC Entertainment. Well, you depend on what minute of the day, Dom, right? We're seeing this type of volatility. You have to be very nimble and you have to be willing to cut your losses and establish new positions. But if you're trading these actively as a true trader, you're not taking a position. That's a really interesting component as well. So let's say Bed Bath & Beyond is bleeding cash. Sure. I, don't, I don't look at the balance sheet. I'm, I, I assume it is. Um, if they can keep this stock levitating long enough to drop a spot secondary or do a rights offering or, or, or a pipe or something, they actually can reverse some of the problems plaguing the company and change its very reality. Uh, driven uh, short squeeze. Uh, the short interest in Bed Bath & Beyond was quite high. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, it's a usual cast of characters, the Wall Street bets crowd, um, you know, pushing the stock up. There's some, there certainly are no fundamental reasons um, for the move that we've seen. If anything, the fundamental picture in pre-market trading here in the U.S. And I have to begin with Bed Bath & Beyond, which is one of the meme stocks that has seen a very real resurgence in recent days. It's up in 12 of the last 13 sessions, higher by 182% over that time, really for no good reason, other than that it signals that some speculative fervor may be back in certain areas. Of Trades heading into this week. Let's start with Bed Bath & Beyond. So BBBY had an extremely consistent run-up, got a bludgeon, and then declared some support and rebounded, and as of Friday after hours, broke into a new high. Generally speaking, the pattern with these is when you get a massive rally closing out the week, it tends to garner more interest over the weekend, and then you get... And I'll add a couple of them in the between. But the first one is Bed Bath & Beyond. Now, you guys know this is a number one on Reddit right now. I think it... It had about, I think it had about like 40 something thousand upvotes. So BBBY, there you go. Move for Still. Bed Bath & Beyond today. I mean, oh my gosh, you're going to be flipping my flapjacks in regards to this one, okay? And this is, this is one of the most popular, I would call it kind of, um, you know, if you want to call it, put it in like the, the, the Wall Street Bets type crowd. Every single this post um, I see is like Bed Bath & Beyond, Bed Bath & Beyond. It is absolutely, like, I don't even remember, like in the AMC phase, I don't even remember AMC like dominating the message board that insane when it came to Wall Street bets. Like this is a whole other level. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay? Absolute insanity here, okay? Now, in regards to the very important number I wanna show you, okay? This is the number. So, Bed Bath & Beyond. Guess what was the most shorted stock as of the latest numbers we had had, okay? It was Bed Bath & Beyond at a float, uh, as far as the percentage of the float shorted, almost 50%. Over 47% of the float was short, Bed Bath & Beyond stock. So this is a stock that, honestly, if you were thinking about a stock to get an absolutely epic 
epic move, it's a stock like Bed Bath & Beyond, just not in the ones that everybody has their eye on, I guess you can say that are the, the prototypical ones, right? Now, great news, oil continues to move down, unless you're on oil. Uh, oil. Target in pretty much every company loop capital who is just so concerned with what bed bath and beyond is doing now in my opinion a lot of times i'm not saying loop does this i have no idea they're not forced to disclose anything but in my opinion a lot of times what you'll see is that short sellers they go and they short a stock and then when it doesn't go their way they'll all of a sudden start pumping out really really we're going to talk over some short squeezes the first one is bbby bed bath and beyond we're also going to go over amc Okay. into the market you're seeing big gains in stocks like bed bath and beyond and this sort of speculative um you know bit of froth is starting to come back as you're as you're seeing stocks rally yeah i mean it's pretty incredible so i don't know whether you have like an elon musk watch or if it's something i mean do you have like an algorithm just to track what he says to see if to the moon Gosh, with uh, Bed Bath & Beyond uh, and Man United, a, a great reminder is always that markets are not always so efficient. But what if they were? How should we be positioning what to expect in this economy? We'll bring that all up with Sandra Horsfield, economist at Invest Tech, who joins us later in the program. Cashing in on some of his Bed Bath & Beyond holding. What's happening over at AMC? How is the CEO perpetuating the, the AMC apes? Beyond or a Coles or a Gap who are in big trouble. You know, they're trying to sell uh, ice cream to Eskimos right now and trying to sell apparel, you know, out there when no one wants to buy it. So I think some of these other companies are in big trouble and some of the smaller mom and pops are in big trouble. Because these stocks have made a ridiculous comeback in recent weeks. Bed Bath & Beyond is the new poster child. It's up 350% in the last three weeks alone and it's higher, oh, that's Best Buy, so that would be why that is. It's down 2%. Bed Bath & Beyond is up more like 20% nice uh, right now before there, the bell. Very Thank you very much, Tom. And GameStop, of course, was They're the initial meme moments. stock. It's what does the setup suggest? Let's get right to work. So Bed Bath & Beyond was certainly on fire this morning. I thought about driving down to their store and getting one of those little misty fans that they sell to cool myself down because I just couldn't take all the heat. Right, what is doing? Um, I have I have no idea. I mean, this company is in a world of hurt in terms of the financial metrics, right? I mean, their their adjusted EBITDA fell last quarter, 218 million. Expectations were for negative 71 million, right? To be honest with you, Bed Bath and Beyond just missed it. Totally missed it. They they don't really have a digital presence. They have too many box stores out there. So you know, there's a lot they can do to kind of fix it, restructuring it, but it's going to take a lot of time. And I just don't think you want to be anywhere near this. Uh, a big group of traders surround around Bed Bath & Beyond. I'm so curious as to what you're seeing as the next big trades for this group. Yeah, sh shout out to Willa Hershing. He's actually uh, uh, a big fan of Wall Street bets. Look, I've, I've always had a criticism towards meme ETFs, at least the way that they're currently uh, structured because of certain regulatory isn't. And as you just pointed out, I doubt Bed Bath & Beyond has the proper weighting on it within that one or any of the other ones. I know that uh, Dave Portnoy's got one called, um, I forget, but, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of people trying to go for that. And the execution is just not quite there on the mechanics. Jamie, why am I not seeing the same thing in crypto? I Bitcoin's up off its low. What's going on with the stock, with the options? Yesterday, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond calls were some of the most popular options in the entire market behind options tied to SPY. So we are seeing something that's reminiscent a little bit, of course, of, of last year's meme mania. Beyond the meme stock that has soared more than 40, 400 percent since late July. It's giving some of that gain back, though, today, down about 12 percent on news that one of its biggest shareholders, Ryan Cohen, has filed to sell as much as 7.8 million shares in the company. So maybe he's looking to take a little just before the commercial break was talking about Bed Bath & Beyond, we've seen some of these meme stocks regain vigor. Does that, does that indicate to you anything about sort of the Fed, whether or not they've sort of pricked some of the speculative bubble? Maybe it hasn't gone away? Yeah, for sure. There has been a very strong uh, risk on sentiment, although what we saw yesterday is uh, similar. Bed Bath & Beyond, and more importantly, as I'm getting Tesla cat hair all over me, yes, I know a lot of people haven't seen Tesla cat. This is for all those bears out there a couple uppercut boom, boom, boom. beyond shares fall after investor ryan cohen reveals intent to sell entire stake and you can see this down there for i know a lot of people are following this we talked about this in the live stream last night 
with Larry and Keenan over at Larry's channel. If you can check that out. According, and you can see the forms they said they intend a lot of money. I'm going to go out on a limb and just say Bed Bath and Beyond made many millionaires for those who got in, especially with some of those options. We're talking three weeks, and you had it up 400%. Um, those Bed Bath and Beyond Belief. This stock keeps, uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a rocket ship. It goes up a lot, like like 92% week to date. <laughs> that would be a lot. Um, how is that possible? Where does that money come from? that can catapult, or is it simply that the float of shares is so small that it doesn't take all that? A little bit more institutional, but you're right when you call it Bed Bath & Beyond. This stock obviously shouldn't be trading where it is. It's the latest example of the mean stock warfare. I think what's so notable about it, though, is that it's kind of going at it alone right now. Well, like that this time with the short squeezes going on in Bed Bath & Beyond. A failing retailer with a gigantic short position that's now being exploited by buyers in the same way that GameStop was exploited. Except GameStop actually always had a really pretty good balance sheet, while Bed Bath wrecked its balance sheet by borrowing lots of money to buy back stock and follow catch and we're going to discuss that at least one investor <laughs> exited bed bath and beyond ahead of gamestop chairman ryan cohen now what's happening with bed bath and beyond right now so guys before i start get started with the bed bath and beyond and go into it i'm going to introduce myself my name is mo paul and i are value investors we have a process that works for us over a long period of time you guys might be doing this meme stuff and this process works for you and that's fantastic but if it ever stops working, come and find us. And by the way, one he, he had call options, and he's basically saying that Bed Bath & Beyond can rise as high as $80 a share by January of 2023. And of 8%. So some of the other stocks we're watching, Bed Bath & Beyond, plunging 43% after Ryan Cohen has sold its stake. This is a pre-market uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, so we'll look at how it opens in the U.S., down over 40%. Down by incredible yeah. amounts today, folks, down 40%. Today, the lovable meme stock is being hit hard. So loading this up in the stock research tool built by yours truly, we're going to do a fundamental analysis on this company. And look, folks, look at the snapshot here of what we got here, here with Bed Bath & Beyond. And we can see that over the last 10 years, our revenue has been somewhat stagnant. Stories the people in Bed Bath & Beyond, they believe it, they buy it, they believe in the story. But of course, we always think about wealth creation, not sort of this fast day trading environment. Yeah, Taylor. I mean, if you want wealth creation, don't be investing in these meme stocks. Um, <clears throat> you know, so we look. Retail investors are feeling the AMC, pain. See, same and, and, best, and uh, Bed Bath & Beyond as well. Um, you know, contrar contrarians have long looked for that kind of stock. I mean, the upside potential of something that looks horrible and is heavily shorted, if you hit it, is enormous. Went bankrupt, so Bed Bath & Beyond's plummeting as Ryan Cohen sells. Apparently, the housing market is in a housing recession now. Bed and Bath & Beyond down 43%. You heard me talk about it yesterday. Um, Ryan Cohen stepping away, and that is driving shares down. Where to buy them at? Bed Bath Beyond is going crazy today. Now look up. at it. Same thing with Bed Bath and Beyond. Don't get sucked in just because you see the stock price going up. It's being pushed artificially by people on the internet, and it has not worked out. Look at GameStop. It's down ninety percent almost since it hit its high. Right. See, the thing you got to understand is when it comes to certain groups of uh, speculation. It attracts very similar folks. And so the same type of folks that might be in a BBBY might play also a GME, an AMC, a Bitcoin, Ethereum, and uh, get in a lot of these different plays. Actually started a market movement in favor of Bed Bath & Beyond. But that's not illegal, is it? Um, it's going to be hard to show that it's illegal. Social media is being used. We have the First Amendment, which is a serious issue. But what is illegal is when people publicize their stock transactions and reports just out that some suppliers are halting their Bed Bath & Beyond shipments due to unpaid bills. We've reached out to the company and let you know if we get more. Joining us now is Tom Sosnoff. He is founder and CEO of Tasty Trade. Tom, this stuff is just so confusing, and I, I have to admit, as someone that really studies the fundamentals of retail, does make me want to rip my hair out a little bit. We know that things at Bed Bath & Beyond are not necessarily smooth sailing. However, I also don't know that it was worth the sell-off that we saw this week. We know there's so much going 
going on on Wall Street Bets and Reddit and what's going on with Ryan Cohen and the following that he has. Can you explain to us what is moving shares of Bed Bath & Beyond and should they? So, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond, you have to put a little context around it. it it's only a billion dollar company at current prices, right? It's so, so it's... It, when you talk about the size of Bed Bath & Beyond, it doesn't take too much to move the stock up or down a couple of dollars. But I think when you get into the kind of, like, let's call it current implied volatility of 200 plus 200 percent. The best are the Bed Bath & Beyond. I think down the road that you could see, and it might be years, it might be two, three years, you could see that that run up for Dogecoin again. I still think this could get above a buck down the road. B B B Y, also known as Bed Bath and Beyond. We're gonna be covering should you buy, should you sell this stock. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys get anything in value out of this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Four percent before the bell, and of course for Bed Bath and Beyond, which caught all of our attention in recent weeks, it fell fifty percent between Thursday and Friday. It is adding to those losses today, down nearly ten percent before the bell. Anna. What we saw happen with Ryan Cohen and Bed Bath and Beyond, what does this mean for retail investors in the meme trade? I would say it means that it sounds very complicated. Uh, we don't think now is the time to take big risks or look at complicated stocks. The market dynamics have changed probably most of And what was left sold well. By the way, they're now going up against Bed Bath and Beyond with many of their stores. Not much of a fight given that Bed Bath struggling to even pay its suppliers. They are dumping their in-house labels and trying to get big time brands back at Bed Bath. They are competing with Target for that same merchandise. Good luck. Meme stocks roaring like Bed Bath and Beyond over this month. It's a clue. Now, why are such moves? Why are these moves such ominous signs? I think there are two main reasons why things play out this way. First, when home gamers participate in these short squeezes, they inevitably get burned when the whole thing unravels. And that's exactly like soon after the bubble gets burst, even if it is a bed, bath, and beyond bubble. And both seeing volume more than double of apples yesterday. Bed, bath, and beyond and GameStop also trading lower this morning. Our next guest out with a recent note reminding investors that the roller coaster ride in these names are being skillfully operated by a few key corporate Insiders, Interactive Brokers Chief Strategist Steve Sosnick joins us now. Uh Is that in the case of both GME and, and Bed Bath and Beyond, we saw the stocks catalyzed by some insider buying. Um, in each case, normally when you see an insider buying, they try to do it quietly. You, you know, you don't see, let's say, a Warren Buffett trying to accumulate a huge position loudly and moving the stock higher. The goal is to, of most insiders is to buy the stock through some GameStop filings and more recently in some Bed Bath & Beyond filings was sort of a, I'm going to say, buying the stock legally but loudly. Um, in a, and one of the things we see in meme stocks is if somebody's buying options or stock aggressively, people take note, and that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And in this case, um, in Bed Bath & Beyond, we had a, you know, an inside renewed size of their stake as a result of some buybacks that Bed Bath & Beyond did. And in fact, Ryan Cohen hadn't been purchasing um, any calls or any security related to Bed Bath & Beyond since the end of March, I'm told. Um, but still, you call Cohen's situation a, quote, masterclass in how to manage SEC filings. Um, when buying a stock or options, notify the market as quickly as possible. When selling, utilize filing methods that offer the ability to obfuscate your intentions for a crucial session. If you want an emerging markets feel, take a look at Bed Bath & Beyond's shares. They have been all over the place, losing 60% in three trading days. A little bit of a rebound today, up about 4% in revenge of the memes. AMC, I got hammered yesterday because people were saying the huge declines that we had been seeing were not because they were lumped in with the memes based on the meme and tr basically created a two to one split. Um, Bed Bath & Beyond, we know shares jumped almost 400%. Now they're back down almost to pre-meme levels. Their, but uh, luxury goods uh, offering. Um, Bed Bath & Beyond, they get apparently, according to the Wall Street Journal, some financing. And for that reason, shares are higher by 15% today. Bed Bath & Beyond is closing in on a lifeline from Sixth Street Partners. Bloomberg's learned the home goods retailer is in talks for a new line of credit that may be around $375 million. That will give Bed Bath & Beyond breathing room 
lost sales slump and it burns through cash. Top of our list as we really keep an eye on that retail bid. Now it's on pace for a record monthly gain. Today's no exception up about 10.7% in pre-market trading. The question here is, is this a sign of broader retail participation in a market that could really use it, uh, getting some of that a uh, bid on of its side? Really the question that everybody has of is now the time to buy. I don't think there ever was a good opportunity to buy. I always think investing in Bed Bath & Beyond is very, very risky. That's run, you know. And not all of yours will either. Okay, moving on. Bed Bath & Beyond is indeed turning back into Bed Bath & Boom. She had a bit of a hero's journey today up to 1488. Now, our thought process after the Ryan Cohen sell induced a draining of the proverbial bathtub was that while it was dumping fast, the short squeeze setup was still extremely solid. And I continue to close the strategies and moves that they are making to get Bed Bath and Beyond out from this mess. Okay, Bed Bath and Beyond. I'm sort of in a really large bath, I guess. And uh, what we've got going on is their strategic updates due today. It was a big yesterday, up another 14% today. It to be flushed out from the crypto space anyway. It wasn't Bed, bed Bath and Beyond, but to go from 24 billion to 8 billion net worth, net worth makes it difficult 2024. Sam. Bankman Freed with David Rubenstein. This is an extremely important conversation for all wired up to crypto like me and uh, Lisa. Mr. Rubenstein joins us this morning. Look for that at 9 p.m. Bed Bath & Beyond are plunging. The struggling home goods retailer said in a filing that it may sell an unspecified number of shares from time to time. Bed Bath & Beyond is holding a conference call today to provide what it calls a business and strategic update. And those shares of Snap um, he's got to leave it there because we've got some news from Bed Bath & Beyond. Let me tell you this, we've got some news. It's just headline after You're headline. You're shopping there this weekend? To close 150 yeah. stores. Jobs getting cut as well, Lisa. A reduction in the workforce. A big reduction in the workforce. Just going through some of these numbers. Yeah. Bramo, what do you see? Well, I'll... Respect for the hardworking people in management and on the line at Bed Bath & Beyond. Bed Bath & Beyond, total return per year for 20 years, negative 4% per year. Total return the last 10 years. Think of what they missed, John, versus other retailers. Home Depot is the icon, negative 14% per year. If this def defines zombie company, why doesn't it restructure a la a Milken transaction? Hike when it meets next week. Shares of Bed Bath & Beyond are plunging today. The struggling home goods retailer has secured new financing and will close stores and slash its workforce. It's after Bed a filing revealed a proposed stock offering. Courtney Reagan joins us now ahead of the company's uh, investor update later this morning. Is that a big shock, Courtney? But you, you know, you, you need money to keep a business going. Yeah, I don't think it's a big shock these days, but we're about less than two hours or so from Bed Bath & Beyond giving a fuller, we hope, strategic update. There's an awful lot of questions the company really needs to answer. With about $108 million in cash, and nearly $1.4 in long-term debt. Comparable sales down 23% in the most recent quarter. There's real questions about liquidity. Plus, the retailer has an interim seat. It around. When you look at the store count, I think it has 700-plus Bed Bath & Beyond stores and maybe 100-plus Bye Bye Babies. But you're right, the valuation is really strong. I hadn't even thought about really swapping it around for the banner names itself. I know that Ryan Cohen obviously had pushed to sell Bye Bye Baby. And at the time, Mark Tritton said, look, we're, we're looking at it. I can't think of a publicly traded restaurant that's as poorly run as Bed Bath & Beyond. That is the benchmark for mismanagement, rivaled only by, say, J.C. Penney. That said, there's nothing like one of these new vacant Bed Bath locations to drag down a whole strip mall. It's the easiest way for Powell to beat inflation, even as the memesters may pull an AMC and keep Bed Bath. A couple of years. So it's going to be difficult for Bed Bath & Beyond to have its cake, which is to drive sales, and eat it yeah. too, which is to, you know, stabilize its profitability. So you think it's, go it's hard to tell if there are any fundamental investors really in this stock just because of what's gone on with the memes and the, sh and the short squeezes. You have a $3.50 price target? That's, That's right. That's about worth? the need to rationalize store base. About 80% uh, of those Bed Bath & Beyonds have a target within mm. 10 minutes. And target has, stands to be a, a, a significant beneficiary of these challenges. It, it, OK, the Bed Bath & Beyond story is the story that keeps on giving, isn't it, across these markets? Thank you very much indeed. Coming up, uh, we're going to talk uh, further about how to position across these markets as we weigh up these calls around bubble risks and further down. The turnaround plan.
still not impressing investors. Curdy, thanks so much. Bed Bath & Beyond, I believe that's one of those meme stocks. This is a joy, and it's a joy for me personally because aerospace engineering matters. If there's specialty and, you know, headline grabber, Bed Bath & Beyond, also in the news today, uh, sliding about 6% so far in the pre, uh, setting itself up for pretty much a bad week for Bed Bath & Beyond. Respect to those companies, but the AMCs and the GameStops and the Bed Bath & Beyonds is, you know, so disrespectful to put a Palantir into that sort of uh, category. Those com those companies, you know, no one's going to know if they're even going to be around in five or ten years. Palantir is a whole different situation. Same here today, AMC down my favorite number. Maybe I should buy AMC. That's my favorite number, 777. Okay, that's a Vegas slot machine. Winner, winner, chicken dinner right there. Okay? Friday, but there are some idiosyncratic stories. Bed Bath & Beyond is always one. Uh, this time plunging 14.4% ahead of the open as a result of the death of the CFO tragically dying. This uh, seems to be what's generating the move in the shares. Lower GameStop, another meme stock uh, declining, perhaps in sympathy. Uh, people sort of questioning whether the froth is coming off that particular sector. Down. One million residents through Wednesday. And shares of Bed Bath & Beyond are plunging today following the death of CEO. FO Gustavo Arnold. He fell to his death from a Manhattan skyscraper on Friday. He was one of the Bed Bath & Beyond executives who provided details last Wednesday on the company's turnaround plan. Stock, more specifically, uh, some things that has happened. So the financial chief officer has uh, committed suicide and he fell from a uh, Manhattan skyscraper uh, on Friday. Um, he was 50 years, 52 years old, and this is stuff that it's going to be a lot more common now. You want to get avoided, and you don't want to end it end with another Bed Bath and Beyond. Not saying Best Buy is going to be that. I think Best Buy is going to be just fine. Just and other than that FedEx drop, which is huge, um, Bed Bath and Beyond closing 150 stores. A Kanye West. I love this one. Terminating a deal with the Gap because he said, quote, a king can't live in someone else's castle. Uh, a king can't live in someone else's castle. They have earnings coming out Thursday pre-market, right? So if I want to do a play on it, it'll have to be either tomorrow or Wednesday. Two years, Amazon did not move. And now we are getting big movements on Amazon, which is what? The underpinnings of that with some earnings with Bed Bath & Beyond at 7.30 a.m. in about a half an hour time. Nike right. after the bell, the retailers, and Micron Technology really speaking to some of the fall-off in demand for chips. Yes, too, I think we're all on the same page yeah, on this. I been coming fast and furious. We'll keep a look at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. After the bell, we're going to be watching Micron. And the reason why this... And then I'll probably get in on that. Next one is BBBY, so Bed Bath and Beyond, Bed Bath and Beyond. But before we go over Bed Bath and Beyond, here goes some more plays we sold today. We sold about 25% of Rivian puts for 11% gain. We sold uh, some Palantir swings, so not my long-term shares, just a swing play, only a 2% loss, very small. We sold about 30% of Netflix put options, 18% gain, 20% of IWM put options, 51% gain. We sold 40% of ARC put options, 11% gain. This was excitement for a little while there, Bed Bath and & Beyond, and then, you know, look at that baby back under five bucks now at this point in time, so. And we're going to talk about much more, so just make sure you stay tuned, smash that like button, subscribe if you are new, and let's get into it. So, the first one is ATXI, okay? Let's get this video over 100 likes. That's all I ask for you guys. Smash the like, make sure you lock in that price in. So, BBBY, Bed Bath & Beyond, remember what I told you guys, it does have a pattern. Now, that pattern is about to come to fruition. I think around next week, okay? But notice how I told you guys I want price to come in this level, in this box area. It is now. So everything is working as I'm expecting. Okay, I am expecting. A shakeout at certain companies. I'm thinking about Bed Bath & Beyond and some of the news we've gotten just there this week. Uh, and it's no longer a situation where a strong consumer and strong margins coming out of record stimulus is a, is a tide that lifts all boat, boats. Inventory, some and of the names that have moved on, Bed Bath & Beyond, Under Armour, Glossier, Gap, Old Navy. That's the who in terms of CEOs, 20 of them exiting in 2022. Why? What is it about the sector